Frustration is setting in for the Democratic presidential candidates who campaigned in Iowa for months but are just now getting just partial results from last night's caucus. It's been an absolute mess. Joining us now to discuss, welcome back our old friend Dr. Lee Hanna, political science professor at Wright State University. It's been too long. It has, yes. It's well, great to see you. Welcome back to Five on yes. Two. As we mentioned a second ago in these partial results, Sanders and Buttigieg doing the best so far. But again, hard to believe we're still waiting for final results. Yes, it really is. It was quite the mess last night. And, you know, typically the way this, this plays out is whoever does win or performs well gets a, a nice news cycle last night. They get to have that victory speech in some, you know, setting in Iowa. Uh, then they all head to New Hampshire and, you know, all the morning shows focus on who did well. And, and their donations tend to go up. Yes, yeah. And there are certain donors who are kind of holding out and want to see some real votes before they put their, their support behind a candidate. And so they lost that window of opportunity. What apparently happened, best we can understand, in the past, the Iowa caucus, which has always been kind of an archaic event to me anyway, people gathering in gyms, you know, moving from one group to the next. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a total outlier compared, compared to how we do elections here in America. But uh, in the past, there's been one set of results. Last night, there was supposed to be three. So there was much more data to be inputted. Plus, they were using a new app that had never been used before, had not been fully tested. And as a result, we had nothing. Until right. now. <laughs> yes, you're right. And so part of the, the goal was to be more transparent so that, that the data that would come out would be the first preference of voters, then where they stood after that first realignment, and then finally this delegate count. And so we, uh, instead, we ended up getting zero instead of three bits of information. Lee, here's my question. It's mm -hmm. a serious question. As I walked out of here last night, I said to some folks, this may be the last Iowa caucus. I mean, it's it's always been strange, mm -hmm. strangely different, yes. kind of quirky, people kind of embraced it for many years. But you know, technology has moved on, life goes on. To me, it just seems like, you know, old times. I mean, come on, people really standing around in <laughs> high school gyms, moving from one group to another, you know, tr convincing, I'll cook, I'll bake cookies for you if you move to our group. I mean, is really that any way to, to do this? I, I think that, seriously, I think this could be it for the Iowa caucus, certainly in the form it is now, and if it stays you know, the first event, they've got to go to a straight election, don't you think? Yes, and it is worth noting that that is how the Republicans do it, so it doesn't quite get as confusing for us. The Democratic method is totally separate. These are run by the state parties, right. um, and it's negotiated kind of within the party. It's not you know, really regulated by the federal government per se. Uh, but you do have a lot of concerns, uh, whether that's how representative Iowa is or how not representative it is of the population. And then also just um, the fact that you know we have a 12-hour window where you can go and vote and we also have these early voting opportunities. When you make it, you know, seven to nine, you lose second and third shift workers, you know, uh, families with small children, yeah. you know, a lot of uh, things change. And, and so there's a lot of concerns coming out now. So much build up to Iowa and to have mm -hmm. it go this way. This is not the way the Democrats wanted to start this process that we can say for sure. Absolutely. Lee, so good to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Don't be a stranger. All right, <laughs> Brooke, over to you.